Lecture 13 covers sections 5.3.2 through 5.3.2.5. At the end of today's lecture, you should be able to understand what it means for a body to be completely, partially, and improperly constrained, as well as understand necessary and sufficient conditions that are used to describe these situations. A two-dimensional system is one where our forces exist in the same plane, such as the xy plane and the axes of the moments are mutually orthogonal to this plane, such as the z-direction. For a two-dimensional system to be in equilibrium, we must satisfy the following equations. The summation of our forces in the x-direction have to be equal to zero. That is, the summation of our reactionary forces, as well as our applied forces, must be equal to zero. Likewise, the summation of forces in our y-direction have to be equal to zero. Lastly, the summation of moments in our z-direction also have to be equal to zero. Now, let's consider a statically determinate system by looking at this truss. We have a truss structure that has a pin support at A and a roller support at B. We apply three loads, P, Q, and S, to our system. Our pin support provides reactionary force in the x and y directions, and our roller support provides reactionary force in our y direction. We have to satisfy our three equilibrium equations. That is, the summation of forces in the x-direction has to be equal to zero, the summation of forces in the y-direction has to be equal to zero, and the summation of moments about point A have to be equal to zero. For us to determine whether or not this system is in equilibrium, let us look at example one. We want to show that our system is statically determinate by using the equations on the previous slide. By depicting our reactionary forces at our pin support A and our roller support at B, we see we have two reactionary forces in the y direction and one reactionary force in the x direction. We have our applied loads P, Q, and S acting on the top of our truss structure, which have x and y components. We will consider a structure to have a height of L and a width of 2L. To begin, we will apply the summation of forces in the x direction. We see our reactionary force in the x direction less our applied load P in the x-direction, less our applied load Q in the x-direction, less our applied load S in the x-direction have to be equal to zero. Thus we have one equation and one unknown. Moving to the summation of forces in our y-direction, we see that RAY plus RBY have to be equal to the y-components of our applied forces, PY, QY, and SY. Currently we have one equation and two unknowns. Lastly, we will consider our moment equation. The summation of moments about point A have to be equal to zero. Considering our rotational point being point A, RAY and RAX do not contribute to our moment equation, nor does PY. Considering our moment arm of 2L, we have RBY creating a counterclockwise moment. We also have PX, QX, and SX acting on a moment arm L. Lastly, we have QY acting on L, and SY acting on 2L, that would be creating a clockwise moment. Thus, if we sum our moments instead of equal to zero, we have 2L RBY plus L times the quantity PX plus QX plus SX minus L times the quantity QY plus 2SY. This has to be equal to zero. Combining this with our summation of forces in our Y direction, we have two equations and two unknowns. That is, we can solve for RBY via our summation of moments about point A, and we can substitute this in into our summation of forces in our y direction such we can solve RAY. RAX was solved for by the summation of forces in our x direction.